Hello, I'm Erica Salazar, a PhD student in the Nuclear Science and Engineering Department at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and I work on superconducting magnet research for the Plasma Science and Fusion Center. It's Friday, the 4th of December, and this is your Fusion News Update. Stories today include 1. Laser fusion reactor approaches burning plasma milestone. 2. Government investment in fusion energy boosts British economy by 1.4 billion pounds. 3. Prime Minister Boris Johnson outlines his 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution for 250,000 jobs. 4. Neutrinos yield first experimental evidence of catalyzed fusion dominant in many stars. And 5. South Korea's artificial sun sets new record. And I've got a bonus at the end. 1. Laser fusion reactor approaches burning plasma milestone. After a decade of operation and nearly 3,000 shots of testing, researchers at the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, at Lawrence Livermore National Lab in the U.S. believe they are very close to reaching a burning plasma. Reaching a burning plasma is an important milestone for all fusion devices because this means that the self-heating power of the fusion plasma now exceeds any external heating. The NIF's facility uses a laser-based inertial confinement fusion research device. It works by using the world's most powerful laser to rapidly heat a small gold cylinder called the hole room that encapsulates a fusion fuel pellet. The heated hole room then emits x-rays which ablate the fuel capsule so quickly that it explodes and compacts the deuterium and tritium fuel within the capsule to high pressures and temperatures needed for fusion relevant conditions. After adding more diagnostics, boosting up laser power, increasing the size of their hull room, and using diamond fuel capsules instead of plastic, the facility has now increased temperatures of the reaction and have achieved energy yields near 60 kilojoules, which is significantly higher than the one kilojoule power of their first ignition campaign. You can see how their facility improvements have pushed them closer to reaching self-heating conditions in this graphic here. As you can see by the graph, NIF is so close to reaching self-heating and will need a little bit more energy to reach their goal. Mark Herman, who oversees the NIF's fusion program, says that a few more modifications can be done to increase temperatures and pressures to reach burning plasma and ignition conditions, such as testing different gold cylinder shapes, soaking the fuel into foam within the capsule, and experimenting with double-walled capsule to trap and transfer X-ray energy more efficiently. Number two. Government investment in fusion energy boosts British economy by 1.4 billion pounds. According to a recently released economic study by London Economics, direct investments by the UK government into fusion energy boosted the British economy by 1.4 billion pounds over the last decade. From 2009 to 2019, a total of 346.7 million pounds were invested in the UK Atomic Energy Authorities or UKAEA, fusion research program at the Colum Center for Fusion Energy and have resulted in a direct gain of 1.4 billion pounds in gross value added, GVA. This means that for every pound invested in UKAEA, approximately four pounds is generated in return. The report also states that nearly 364 million pounds in contracts were directly won by UK organizations for the ITER project. Approximately 36,900 direct and indirect job years were created, which is equivalent to an average of 4,000 jobs per year. Advancements in fusion-adjacent technologies, such as robotics, new materials, computing, and artificial intelligence make room for future applications in other fields, such as space exploration, mining, healthcare, and transport. Lastly, there are also indirect benefits of increasing the skill set of the UK workforce. Professor Ian Chapman, the CEO of UKAEA, says, This is just the tip of the iceberg with regards to UKAEA's capabilities and fusion energy's projected contribution to our shared economic, ecological, and social future. Fusion energy research and development needs long-term and large-scale investments. There are substantial benefits fusion research and development can deliver not only to the economy, but also to the UK's net zero target by 2050 which means going beyond the decarbonization of electricity. Our mission is to lead the delivery of sustainable fusion energy and maximize scientific and economic benefit. Which leads us to our next piece of news. Three, Prime Minister Boris Johnson outlines his 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution for 250,000 jobs. A couple weeks ago, on November 18th, the UK Prime Minister outlined his 10-point plan 
towards removing the UK's contribution to climate change by 2050. Part of this plan includes government investment of 12 billion pounds for the support and creation of 250,000 green British jobs. The 10 points are built upon the following, offshore wind, hydrogen production, electric vehicles, public transport, cycling and walking, research towards a greener aviation and ship industry, homes and public buildings, carbon capture, protection and restoration of nature, innovation and finance, and last but not least, nuclear. The plan has outlined an investment of 525 million pounds towards the development of large and smaller scale nuclear power plants and towards research and development of new advanced modular reactors. In addition, the nuclear support includes fusion as well. The UK government is already investing 222 million pounds for the spherical tokamak for energy production program, gave a 10 million pound grant to private company tokamak energy, and also plans to invest another 850 4 million pounds for new fusion facilities, infrastructure, and apprenticeships. The government plan states, we are doubling down on our ambition to be the first country in the world to commercialize fusion energy technology, enabling low carbon and continuous power generation. Four, neutrinos yield first experimental evidence of catalyzed fusion dominant in many stars. The Boroshino Collaboration, an international team of approximately 100 scientists, is the first to detect neutrinos emitted from the sun proving the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen fuel cycle, or CNO, is present in the sun. This finding is really important because up until now, scientists have theorized that the CNO cycle is the dominant energy source of many heavy stars, but this has never been directly detected in any star. Lighter or younger stars get energy by fusing hydrogen into helium, which they call the proton-proton chain, whereas heavier stars, heavier than the sun, primarily get most of their energy via the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen chain, or the CNO fusion cycle. Scientists are able to determine which fusion cycles are taking place by measuring the spectral signature of neutrinos emitted from the star. Neutrinos are extremely difficult to measure. Up to 420 billion neutrinos pass through the average human eye every second. Scientists have to use very large detectors with extremely low background radiation levels to measure a single neutrino. The Boroshino detector is located 1400 meters below the surface of the Apennine Mountains in Italy. Because of the depth, size, and purity of the detector, neutrinos can be measured as flashes of light when they collide with electrons in a 300-ton ultra-pure organic scintillator. Up until recently, the Boroshino collaboration have only been able to detect components of the proton-proton solar neutrinos. After more development work to add purification steps and methods to stabilize their detector, they were able to measure the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen neutrinos. Andrea Pocar, a particle physicist on the project, says, Confirmation of CNO burning in our sun, where it operates at only 1%, reinforces our confidence that we understand how stars work. Prior to the detection of CNO-derived neutrinos, Boroshino was scheduled to end at the end of 2020. With this new finding, data collection could extend into 2021, adding further knowledge and confidence in understanding our stars. 5. South Korea's artificial sun sets new record. On Tuesday, November 24th, the Korea Institute of Fusion Energy announced that the Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research Facility, also called K-STAR, reached a world record by operating its plasma at 100 million degrees Kelvin for at least 20 seconds. And to give some perspective, the sun's core temperature is only 15 million degrees Kelvin. Now, Korea's Institute of Fusion Energy has scheduled a new goal to reach 100 million degree plasma temperatures for 300 seconds by 2025. And here are some bonuses. PPL awarded a total of $4 million to simplify design and construction of stellarators. The U.S. Department of Energy's Advanced Research Project Agency Energy, or RPE, awarded Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, called PPPL, $3 million in funding for the design and construction of permanent magnets to facilitate the development of stellarator fusion energy devices. An additional $1 million was awarded by the Fusion Energy Sciences Office for the three-year project as well. Next, PPPL receives international recognition for platform to conduct educational experiments remotely by anyone, anywhere. Remember the virtual tokamak site Paul Barron mentioned last time? 
Well, another virtual education experience on that same site called the Remote Glow Discharge Experiment allows you to remotely log into a plasma experiment at PPPL and control them with your browser. The PPPL physicists that developed the remote site were one of 10 global winners selected by an international science committee and recognized as a cutting edge digital education technology. Well, with that, I hope you have fun and learn a lot. And that's all for your Fusion News this week. Please subscribe to our channel for more Fusion News and check out the links in the description below for more information.